No, it's <laughs> this group called Love in Action, and what they do is uh, it's a church type group, and they try to turn gay people straight. Ooh. Yes. Nice. And so basically, uh, describes what it is, and then there's two guys that both went to it, and one of them is now quote unquote straight, and the other is against the group. So they were both gay. Yeah. The one guy went to get fixed, and now he's against this whole love in action thing. Nothing scarier than a gay guy who thinks he's uh, been cured of being gay, right. because you just ain't been. Well, the guy who thinks he's cured, I think Gerard or something, he, Gerard. Knows, he knows he's not. Really? Yeah. But, but, but he well, thinks he is? Hear, yeah. All right. All right, why don't we get to the, the audio They here. have a kit they give all members. It's a Bible and a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Just go talk to them for a little while. <laughs> All right. Uh, in this clip, they explain what love in action does. Mm. We do believe that homosexual behavior is a is a chosen option. Love in action claims to conduct reparative therapy, hoping to rid clients of homosexuality. Our mission is to be a Christ-centered ministry for the prevention or treatment of unhealthy and destructive behaviors, which includes same-sex attractions. But mm -hmm. how how do they like deprogram you? And reparent you. I guess they know how to do it through do they uh, Jesus. That? Yeah, they. Uh, since it's all guys, you're not. No eye contact. No eye contact is allowed. Um, they they don't let anybody talk to anybody. They just try to get you away from guys. What are they, What are they doing? Uh, is this a group thing? Yeah. So they bring a bunch of gay men <laughs> together. And all they're thinking about is fucking one another. Yeah. And don't look at his eye. Just stare below the belt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They always go, it's an alternative lifestyle. Don't you think being Amish is an alternative lifestyle? <laughs> Sucking a cock is a conscious decision, right? <laughs> a cock. A cock. <laughs> All right, well, here's Brandon. He went there to get fixed, and now he's so against this whole thing. I mean, they help you take apart your life, and they sort of tear you down by sharing these moral inventories um, in the hopes that they'll release shame from your life, which just doesn't happen. No. That doesn't sound like it would work if you're really love man ass. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. Are they in a classroom or are they in a camp? Mm. Yeah, where do they I do? I think this? it's more like a camp thing. Camp. Ooh. It's all fun and camp and showers <laughs> must be lovely. <laughs> Short <Saturday>. shorts. <laughs> don't look into each other's eyes. Lunch. You don't want to break the rule. You're just staring at his pubic hair. <laughs> They're all dressed like the fag in This Boy's Life with the fucking little Boy Scout scarf tied around the neck gently. <laughs> I shoot for the pink team. They have to get like 50 showers so they don't shower together. Yeah. There's 50 of them. Right. 500 bars of soap laying on the floor. You're not allowed to pick them up. I told you to leave that alone. Yeah, brand new bar has to be unwrapped again. <laughs> wow. All right. All right, more of Brandon here. I think it's absolutely wrong. The faith community can no longer continue to embrace programs like this that promote exclusion when Christ promoted inclusion in his kingdom. Mm. Yeah, they get that whole religious angle, and uh, so uh, I wonder, are they just throwing guilt at you and saying it's wrong if you're a Christian? Yeah, pretty much this? that you know this is your choice because you know God doesn't make you this way. And yeah, no matter what they say, no matter how much the gay guy is saying, look, I'm like this. I didn't choose to be. This is what I'm attracted to, and that's that's it. The, the, they will probably say, no, you're choosing this. All you need is to let Jesus in your life, and and the beautiful thing is, look, I hate to break it to anybody, but if Jesus was around, you know, long hair, and he was, he would have been a flaming liberal. <laughs> Honest to God, he would. You think he, so? Uh, absolutely. Jesus would have uh, appreciated the gay lifestyle. Would have been. A, he would have been tolerant of it. He would have been a flaming liberal. Yeah. He would have annoyed me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He, tolerant. That was all it was about. Loving everybody. He would have been a flaming. Yeah, but that nice Catholic guy, Church got his the, the yeah. hands on that that preaching and the uh, the Bible and and interpreted it and said. Uh, no gays allowed. Hey, forgave the criminal on the cross. The guy's like, I think you are who you say you are. He's like, all right, it's all good. Come on. He stole something. <laughs> he wasn't sucking cock. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Big Maybe difference. eventually he would have. Big difference, Jimmy. All right. Here we go. Gerard. He went, uh... Gerard. He got fixed. So this guy's cured. Yeah, the other guy doesn't believe in the program at all. This guy got fixed. He used to be a, a gay guy. Cured now, of the gay. And now he uh, loves women. The change is definitely possible for people who desire it. It does not change attractions, but it does change behavior. Guy okay. still loves the cock. <laughs> Guy still wants the cock. Guy don't touch the cock. <laughs> now it's all about the pussy. It doesn't change attractions. No. So this guy is saying, look, I still just love the man ass, but... Yes. 
He I'm loves, gonna chai out the chicks. He loves women with a few adjustments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Hi, Big Dick Daddy. <laughs> wants his, wants his uh, woman to wear a strap on. And, yeah. And not yeah. shower for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> Smell a little manly, a little musky. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, more Gerard. You say right. you have guardrails now, right? That will help you marry a woman. And what does this? Mean? I have guardrails for my behavior, not for my attractions, but for my behavior. So there are certain things that I don't want to do based on my faith. And there's hundreds of thousands of people just like me that have these same guardrails. So it's keeping him on the road to heterosexuality. Man, there's a lucky gal out there yeah. and doesn't know what's waiting for her. Instead of hitting like an oil slick, spinning off the road, going through the guardrail and landing in a man's asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he needs the guardrails to guide him. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Whatever gets you through your day, uh, sir. Man. We deal with people who want help, who want to change, and the people that we deal with before they come in our program most often report feelings of depression, suicidal thoughts, that was certainly my experience before the program. But is some of that because of shame? Absolutely, because they're engaged in behavior that they don't want to be engaged in. Do you think don't want to be? Or do you think he blurts out things like he's trying to? You can't hide the attraction. Like he's kissing a girl and fucking her, and he yells out, "Put your big cock in my mouth!" <laughs> she says, "What?" And he goes, "Nothing." <laughs> <laughs> Say anything. <laughs> and you know he's looking, you know, they, walking down they, the like, street. Do they, like, paper off, or do they have to stop, like, on the <laughs> <Right. time? laughs> Did he stop turkey? cold turkey? Yeah. Did he, like... <laughs> it's, it's, like Nick, it's, like, it's like that smoking cessation thing. You can only suck up to the helmet in the third week. <laughs> you wear a little patch of cum on your arm. <laughs> Let it soak in. Eventually oh, you get down to Asian cocks. <laughs> <laughs> week four, no more bag tickling. Damn it, I love that part. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Nicorette gum, it's like yeah. a little gum. Gummy coffee, just chew it, spit it out. <laughs> Come flavored. <laughs> wow. Based on my experience, I did not want to embrace homosexual behavior because that was not what I wanted to do based on my deep rooted faith. So this program helps me align my actions with my faith. Put some rock salt in his Vaseline. That'll learn him. <laughs> but he still, uh, he still likes men, wants to have sex with men. He's just chosen not to. Right. To stay in line with his religion now. So what he does now is when he's going down on a girl, he'll like force out a huge shit and then suck it back in and force it back out. <laughs> so oh this way, no one gets hurt. <laughs> oh God. One more clip. Uh, we're running out of right show. That's why I want to goes. push forward here. <laughs> Jesus. Should we uh, force people into this program? Should a child, should a teenager, should anyone be forced into the program by their parents or just even coerced? We Not respect forced. the parents' responsibility Suck to that raise their cock. child if they see fit. I think there are major concerns that parents should not feel forced. I mean, the parents felt shamed by the church to do this, and I think it's unfortunate that they had to make the decision they made. It's, it's very dangerous. It's also important to note that we don't have any kind of guards, no locked doors. The teens are not forced to be there. Mm. But the child is still submissive to the parents' wishes and to the financial and all the other ties that go there. It's, it's not like you can just pick up and leave one day. Well, we all agree <laughs> that teens don't always want to do things. I mean, should teens not be allowed to go to school because they don't want to go to school? Of course not. They strap into a chair, like clockwork orange, and hold his eyes open. And every time they show two cocks bumping, they electrically shock him. <laughs> <laughs> this wow. time tomorrow, you'll be healthier still. <laughs> <laughs>